Hello and welcome to our latest edition of NBC News with me, Yvonne Tamanda Poya. Our top stories this morning. President Chapera and the First Lady express deep sadness at the death of 26 people, including two children in a road accident in Kasungu. Luberg University of Germany agrees to start training Malawian nurses in dealing with diabetes and hypertension cases. And in business news, Malawi asks India to improve the preferential tariff scheme for Malawi to export more products to that country. Glad you could join us. Now, the news in detail. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera and the First Lady, Madame Monica Chakwera, are deeply saddened by the death of 26 people, including two children who died in a road accident at Katondo in Kasungu. In a statement, the first couple extended heartfelt condolences to the grieving families and friends. According to Kasungu Police Spokesperson Joseph Kajiko, the minibus with registration number MZ11670 and driven by Jack Piri was en route from Jenda in Mzimba to Lilongwe. The accident occurred when the driver of the fuel tanker attempted to avoid a cyclist, resulting in a head-on collision with the minibus. The impact caused the minibus to overturn and burst into flames tragically killing everyone on board. Government is saddened by the loss of lives in this tragic accident, where we are talking about 26 lives. Uh, some of these are parents, some of them uncles, brothers, husbands, wives, who were also breadwinners in their own families, as it is understood that some of these people, if not most of them, we are coming from gender uh, into Lilongwe for business activities. So it is sad. It is a, tra a, a tragic loss. The president expresses his uh, sorrow and uh, sends his uh, condolences to the bereaved families. As government, we mourn with them. And under a directive from the president, we are making sure that the families are condoled, they are given the necessary support that should be given. It's still uh, a very shocking moment, especially considering that some of the bodies have not been identified due to the cause of the death, but efforts are still being made to identify all the bodies so that this is burial can be accorded. As government, we are on standby. Once the bodies are identified, we are making all arrangements to provide for the uh, coffins, the transportation, as well as other needs to make sure that the funerals are conducted in a very respectful manner. Meanwhile, Kasungu District Commissioner James Kanyangalazi says government will provide every support that will be needed to repatriate the dead bodies to their homes. Olive Piri reported from the scene of the accident. Uh, indeed, it's sad that uh, around the, uh, between 6 and 7 a.m. this morning, uh, we had a fatal accident where uh, many of us are coming uh, from the direction of gender going to the wrong way uh, after between Tukoma and Distante, I was involved in the uh, accident as it was trying to avoid a, a cyclist. It hit the cyclist uh, who died on the spot and then it swept to a tanker which was on the other side of the road. I uh, hit the tanker and it, um, it overturned it uh, several times before it is, uh, they came to stand still. And the moment it, it stopped, it started, uh, it, it, it caught fire. And the third to report that all the 25 people who were on board are dead and were bent, bent into ashes, hardly to recognize any face or anybody that this is our uh, world departed brother because they were all into ashes. In a related development, four people have been killed in a road accident after a minibus they were traveling in overturned two times at eight miles in Zomba on Thursday. 
Police Regional Traffic Officer for the East, Augustine Chaganika, confirmed the death of the four to MBC crew at the scene. Chaganika said the accident occurred due to overspeeding of the vehicle registration number MHG 6746 driven by Wilson Jemba Jemba. Meanwhile, 10 passengers are receiving medical attention at Zomba Central Hospital. Yes, indeed, four people have been killed with this tragedy road accident happened just now. The motor vehicle was being driven from the direction of Zomba going towards Planta. The motor vehicle, the, tar, the rear tar burst open and started over 10 and rest on the tarmac. Lubeck University of Germany has agreed to start training nurses in dealing with diabetes and hypertension cases in Malawi. The development comes after President Dr. Lazarus Yakwera met a delegation of the university led by its director, Professor Christina Kuschevrog. Blessings Kanachi reports. The burden of hypertension and diabetes in Malawi is too huge, with one nurse expert based at Kamuzu Central Hospital in a wrong way. President Dr. Lazarus Yakwera met a delegation of Lubeck University of Germany where he has asked the institution to start training more nurse experts in diabetes and hypertension in Malawi. After the meeting, the leader of delegation, who is also director of Lubeck University, Professor Christina Koshvak, said lack of experts in the field of health in dealing with diabetes and hypertension has caused so many deaths in Africa. So we are absolutely grateful for this meeting and it was a very nice experience and I think it is absolutely important to transfer skills between the countries. So we have this worldwide problem of chronic disease. Uh, it's not only infection disease, but the chronic disease, like hypertension, which is called also the silent killer, <laughs> or diabetes and all these diseases, they are, they are coming all over the world. We have big problems with it. People are, um, when they're diseased, they can, can, can be really, um, yeah, they can also die from this disease. And so we have to prevent the disease. And it's absolutely important to meet politicians from different countries and put them together on a table, also German politicians. And so this was an absolutely important meeting for us today. And it's a great pleasure to meet the president of Malawi. Lucien Kutumura, director of nursing and midwifery services in the Minister of Health, says this agreement is a game changer. This is the type of support that Malawi needs if we are going to progress in the area of renal care in the channel. Because we are having a lot of problems now, you know that we are having a lot of uh, kidney failure problems, and they themselves have a program that already looks at uh, issues around kidney care. In fact, their strength is more on the prevention, which I suppose as Malawi we really need to be supported to make sure that that part is actually managed properly, so that you, you don't get a lot of patients needing tertiary level care in terms of dialysis. Currently, patients with kidney failure in Malawi depend on the dialysis machine in the wrong way and the blunter alone for treatment. And the training of more experts in the field will help is the challenge. Blessings Kanache, NBC News, Berlin, Germany. President Dr. Lazarus Yakwera has assured Malawians in the diaspora of government's commitment on developing Malawi to achieve 2063 aspirations. Speaking when he hosted Malawians in Germany, Dr. Yakwera said his administration is revamping the railway system, constructing new roads, reliable electricity, as well as constructing mega farms to ensure food security. Here is Blessings Kanache. Over 250 Malawian families live and work in various fields of development here in Germany. Chairperson of the Association of Malawians Living in Germany, Alex Kambiri, asked the president to champion the start of a new era of teaching German language in Malawi. Kambiri said there are over 400,000 jobs in Germany requiring people from countries such as Malawi, but language is a barrier. He also suggests the need to allow Malawians in their diaspora to vote in future national elections. Malawi can do more to enable its students and scholars to get scholarships from German universities. That's the first area. The second area, we think, again, 
uh, the embassy uh, Umozo, Malawi in Germany and the Malawi government can do more to help Malawians who cannot make it to university access technical uh, stroke professional stroke vocational training in Germany. We are very grateful that the president was uh, pos has positively re received our request for to enable a diaspora to vote. Of course, he has explained that that will need the, that the law should be revisited, and then of course the logistics of how to go about it. Whether do, do we vote through the embassies or do we vote? Online, those are the things that the, te the technical spark in Malawi have to look at. Taking his turn, President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera assured Malawians in the diaspora that his government is changing the face of Malawi in as far as development is concerned. My administration has made historic decision and precedented in Malawi's recent history by allocating 30% of the national budget toward development. The administration is also using these resources to invest in significant infrastructure projects that Malawi needs to fulfill its potential and attain its 2063 vision. Those of you who have been at home can attest uh, to the fact that our capital city, Lilongwe, is undergoing significant changes. And my administration is constructing dual carriageways that will triple the existing ones before I, I took office in 2020, some of these things were not there. We're also rehabilitating the 300 kilometer section of the M1 from Lumbazi to Chueta, which covers five districts, Lilongwe, Doa, Kasungum, Zimba, and Rumpi. Dr. Chakwera also said Malawians will be able to learn German language and other languages such as Swahili and French to broaden up people's opportunities at home and beyond. A lot of young people are able and capable of learning uh, such. And so like we are wanting to teach Kiswahili in our schools and Portuguese in our schools, we have uh, invited the French to come back. And so they have already agreed they are rehabilitating the cultural center. Uh, we are talking with the Germans to do this. And so even this morning, that was part of what we did. Meanwhile, the German government has pledged to work with Malawi in supporting people affected by climate change-related disasters. Parliamentary State Secretary for the Minister of Economic Development and Cooperation, who led a German delegation, made the remarks after he had an audience with President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera in Berlin, Germany. It was a great uh, privilege and pleasure for me to have that opportunity. We're happy to welcome His Excellency here in Berlin. We're celebrating 60 years of uh, Malawi-German relationship. There's a lot that we can look at. Of course, we talked about economic cooperation, and I mentioned the terrible drought that has affected Malawi and its neighboring countries. So I talked with uh, the president about our support in uh, challenging times. We want to uh, support the Malawi government in addressing the immediate needs, the consequences of the drought. So we will be able to, um, to support Malawi in that uh, very difficult situation. Malawi and Germany have enjoyed bilateral relations since 1964. Blessings Kanache, NBC News, Berlin, Germany. Minister of Mining, Monika Changanamono has stressed the need for more formalized small-scale activities in the mining sector. Changana Muno was speaking when she presided over the official commencement of artisanal and small-scale gold mining activities at Tagwilizana Cooperative in Mandondo village, Balaka. Changana Muno emphasized that the small-scale mining subsector is crucial and the government is actively encouraging the participation of local Malawians, including individuals, companies and cooperatives. Changana Muno explains. Uh, right now, I uh, would like to thank Joda Resources, uh, Joda Resources Limited, who have provided this machine for the cooperatives to be able to use them. And uh, I'm sure that uh, this is going to help a lot, not only to the two cooperatives that are here, but even to the uh, communities around the Balaka, because uh, we have um, agreed with the district for Balaka that we should be able to support them in uh, different ways. And therefore, uh, for the time being, they're going to be supported. But later on, because the production is going to increase, it means that they're going to be able to get more resources and they're going to be able to learn these machines for themselves. So everywhere in the country where there's gold, 
we can just take the ore and bring it here for testing and it's going to be able to detect how much gold is in that ore. Therefore, this is very important and it's an exciting step for us as a country and we would like later on to have more machines. You are watching the morning edition of MBC News with me, Yvonne Tamanda Poya. Remember, you can access all MBC digital platforms by simply scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. A reminder of our top stories. President Chakwera and the First Lady express deep sadness at the death of 26 people, including two children in a road accident in Dasungu. Luberg University of Germany agrees to start training Malawian nurses in dealing with diabetes and hypertension cases. And in business news, Malawi asks India to improve the preferential tariff scheme for Malawi to export more products to that country. Welcome back. We move on with a story that says a rapid mortality mobile phone survey report by the Institute of Public Opinion Research, IPOR, has revealed that a telephone survey is the cheapest way that can be used to generate data that is crucial for policymaking. Director of Training and Programs for the Institute of Public Opinion Research, Mayako Chasukwa, made the remarks during the Rapid Mortality Mobile Phone Survey Dissemination Workshop in Mponela, Doha. According to Chasukwa, telephone service produce reliable information that can help in the development of the country through research-based policy decisions. Olive Piri speaks to Chasukwa. We always need uh, data, accurate data, but uh, uh, over time there has been skepticism about using telephones and then generating uh, correct uh, data. So uh, let's give it a chance uh, that even telephone interviews would be very important for us uh, to collect data that is important for uh, making decisions. And uh, it's cheaper uh, that way. Uh, in research, you need resources. Uh, so telephone interviews would help us reduce the cost of uh, data collection but at the same time collecting uh, uh, data that is important for us to make decisions. Mzuzu City Council says urban migration is contributing to the increasing of urban poverty in the city. The council spokesperson, McDonald Gondwe, has since advised people living in disaster-prone low-income areas in the city to relocate to safer areas. Geoffrey Banda has compared this report read by Jackson Sichali. People migrate from rural to urban areas looking for greener pastures in major cities of Malawi. Due to lack of skills and resources, they end up living in unplanned areas and contribute to urban poverty. Muzu City is also facing the same challenge. According to one of the residents of Masasa in Mzuzu, Evelyn Mbewe, she and her husband came to Mzuzu to look for peace work and are currently living in a disaster-prone area in the township. We came from Lilongwe looking for peace work here in Zuz. Later, we searched for cheap rental house here. Public relations officer from Zuz City Council, McDonald Gondwe, is warning people who are living in disasters prone areas in the city to evacuate for their own safety to avoid loss of lives and properties during rainy season. Council, we have got uh, the urban structure plan. This is the plan that guides the council in terms of uh, land use and uh, matters to do with development. So each and every location has a defined use. Currently, uh, the bottom line is to enlighten them on the dangers of living in such areas. Um, of late, we don't have uh, plans to relocate them, but the sensitizations are meant for them to safely locate. So they move from disaster-prone areas to safer areas. That's our call. With a current population of over 273,000 people, Mzuzu is one of the fastest growing urban centers at the rate of 4.2% per annum. In business news, 
Malawi has asked India to improve the preferential tariff scheme for Malawi to export more products to that country. Minister of Trade and Industry Sosin Gwengwe said this during the India-Africa Business Conclave currently underway in the Indian capital New Delhi. Justin Mkweu has more in this report. Apologies, we do not have uh, that report at the moment by Justin Mkweu. We move on to the item that says uh, Malawi Congress Party MCP newly elected Secretary General Richard Chimwendo Banda says government is committed to developing the Shire Valley and Malawi as a whole. Chimwendo Banda said this during a rally he addressed at Injalo Trading Center in Chikwawa. We have this report read by Aileen Chimoyo. In his address, Jumwendo Banda said government is determined to transform the Shire Valley through the construction of roads, rail line, and other infrastructures. Jumwendo Banda said the projects are the ones that the past government promised but failed to implement. The president here in the Lower Shire is busy developing Lower Shire. The first thing that Malawians are thankful for are the mega farms. There's water everywhere. With mega farms, then we can end the hunger here, which is rampant. And because of the mega farms, the people are going to be empowered, and the hunger is going to be history. The second thing the president is doing is infrastructure. Number one is the railway. Look at the railway, which has never been a priority of our colleagues. But Chagwera, once he resumed office, he started the railway. Now we are progressing very well. This railway will bring development here in the lower city. Apart from that, the other major lots that are being done, we have the which we are starting this year, and the Eastern Bank Road, which we are also doing this year. But about, apart from that, we are also doing other loads, uh, um, uh, earth loads around the district of Chihuahua. We have a president who has laid a very good foundation. This president must be given another chance. He said President Lazarus Chagwela's administration is ensuring that people have food amidst the hunger situation in some areas caused by drought. The MCP Secretary General disclosed that government will roll out a food distribution initiative in Chikwawa and in Sanjay. From next month, we are distributing food relief to over 85,000 households, almost a third of the population in Chikwawa. This is going to alleviate poverty, but also alleviate hunger, which has hit so much here in Chikwawa. The message is there must be fairness and justice as names are being written and as distribution is being done. But this is the government Malawians should trust, the people of Lower Shire should trust, and Dr. Jaguera is going nowhere. He's taking again government in 2025. Others who spoke at the rally include Jesse Gabuida and Steve Baba Maundira, MCP new spokesperson and new director of youth, respectively. Gabuida urged people of Chikwawa and the entire Lower Shire to register en masse so they vote for President Jagwera and the MCP in the 2025 general elections. Earlier, Steve Baba Malondela advised the youth to utilize government initiatives that aim to empower the youth. Now to sports. Bot Salt has raised its sponsorship for the Southern Region Under-23 Netball League from 12.5 million to 14 million kwacha for one year. The development follows the expiry of a three-year agreement between the two parties. We have a report. Speaking during the signing ceremony in Blantyre on Wednesday, the country's board sort representative, George Damson, said the move underlines the commitment to developing netball in the country. As a brand, we've seen the benefit of associating with uh, netball. It's a very widely supported and loved sport in Malawi. So we feel that um, this is a small way of contributing to its development. We want to see future netball stars um, coming from uh, this sponsorship. And going forward, we believe that uh, the Southern Region Netball Association has that capacity to groom more youngsters to feed into our national team. As you know, that the Queens bring a lot of joy to a lot of Malawans. So we believe that this is the platform for us to um, groom more players. In her remarks, Vice Chairperson of the Southern Region Netball Committee, Olive Msungama, was excited with the development. It is very important because we have almost 14 districts which we run. So for us to have this sponsorship, it, it will take us a long way. The launch definitely will be by 31st August or 1st September. Witnessing the renewal of the partnership was Vice President for the Netball Association of Malawi, Lumbani Antonio. 
This sponsorship is so important to NAMP. As you know, as mother body, we really encourage grassroots netball. Grassroots netball brings um, the best of it when it comes to net netball development. So we are so excited and we have received this uh, uh, league with uh, so much excitement. The Botsol Southern Region Netball League, which has been renewed to another one year, will be played in 14 districts. Well, that item wraps up this edition of MBC News. A reminder of our top stories before we leave. President Chakwera and the First Lady express deep sadness at the death of 26 people, including two children in a road accident in Kasungu. Luberg University of Germany agrees to start training Malawian nurses in dealing with diabetes and hypertension cases. And in business news, Malawi asks India to improve the preferential tariff scheme for Malawi to export more products to that country. For more on these and other stories, you can follow us on mbc.mw, Facebook, and X. You can access all MBC digital platforms by simply scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. You are with me, Yvonne Amanda Poya. Thanks for watching and good morning. For the more adventurous music lover, there is an alternative. It does mean travelling, though. An international music festival is flourishing in Malawi in southeast Africa.